The Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab, show number 6, 7, 8, for the 9th of October, 2017. Good readings, folks, and... Welcome to the Mac Observer's Mac Geek Cab, the show where you send in questions, tips, and cool stuff found. We share your questions, your tips, and your cool stuff found, and we answer your questions in addition to all of that. One of these days, I'll get that right, but I think I did get it right. It was just a little circuitous getting there. Sponsors for this episode include Jamf Now. We're at jamf.com slash MGG. You can get your first three devices free for life. Remote management, magic stuff. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Barebones software at barebones.com with BB Edit. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in somewhat wet, dreary Fairfield, Connecticut, this is John F. Braun. And here in another part of Durham, New Hampshire, getting visited by Nate. Thanks a lot. Yeah, this pilot Pete. Thanks for having me back, guys. Yeah, it's good to have you back, Pete. Yeah. I uh, this is why we have changed the recording time to Monday evening. That's one of the reasons. It was the catalyst for us yeah. changing it. Although there's other good reasons to do it too. I think so. For the month of October, at least, we're experimenting with recording here on Mondays at uh, five p.m. five fifteen yeah. p.m. Eastern. I'm, I'm just hoping you didn't get grounded there, Pete. No, nobody caught me, so I'm, I'm good <laughs> to go. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, all right. And hello to everybody in the chat room at MacGeekGub.com slash stream. Thanks for joining us today. Very good stuff. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff to go through. So let's start with Ken. We've got a few cool stuff found from you folks. I've actually got a pile of cool stuff found here, John, that we're going to probably wind up surfacing in the next week or two. But um, but we will go with your cool stuff found for now. Ken says uh, last month, Elevation Labs made Elevation Dock 4. I bought it and I love it. Uh, their Dock 3 was 99 bucks. Their Dock 4 is 59. It's a dock for your iOS devices and it works for the iPhone and the iPad. Um, it's the only dock that I could use one hand to pull the device off because the, the dock will actually stick to your table or work surface, whatever that is. It has nano pads on the bottom. And uh, he says, I can use the same dock with my iPhone 5S without a case and my iPad Air with a case. Very cool stuff. We've put a link to that in the show notes. They've got a little video there that uh, actually makes it look pretty cool. So, yeah. Yes. Very good stuff. Uh, anybody have anything to uh, say about that before we move on to listener Dave here? Well, I guess not. You're with me, right, John? I'm with you. Okay, sweet. Um, okay. Only thing I noticed about my doc is uh, they're, they're missing the uh, the text um, on iOS 11. The text uh, for some of the items is gone. Other than that, but yeah, always good to check out an alternative, right? The text on your items is gone on your I doc? seem to notice, uh, I, I seem to recall that in iOS 10, the name of You're talking the about app software, and we're talking about a, a literal piece of hardware that sits on your desk. Oh, all right. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Moving okay. on. But te- no, no, no. It's fine. Now that we've made that distinction, what's the problem? Because we do that here too. I don't think it's a problem. It, 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 it's I've noticed that the iOS 11 doc, um, th- there were a lot of visual changes, but one of the changes that I noticed as soon as I upgraded is, well, where's the name of the apps in mm. the iOS doc? Uh, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And they decided to, I guess, you know, free up, Real estate, yep. they're they're not there anymore. They're not, not that you really need them, I don't think. That's right. But, uh, no, yeah, if they're in your dock, you probably know what they are. So there you go. All right. All right. Uh, moving on to listener Dave with uh, his cool stuff found. He said, uh, I found a piece of software. It's a terminal piece of terminal software. It's a, it's a command line utility. Thank you. Uh, called GPAC. And it's a package that lets you create, modify, and extract items from MP4 files. MP4 files, we mostly know those as video files, but really what it is, is it's a package format that can contain lots of different things. And what GPAC does is it lets you extract items from those packages. You're not transcoding, you're not converting it, you're just taking things out. 
And he says, I was using audio hijack to record a bit of audio from a web video. I wanted to capture uh, something. And he says, so uh, because of potential audio processing, I had audio hijack record in Apple lossless format. Um, audio hijack by default stores Apple lossless recordings into an MP4 container. And in their preferences, they indicate that that's a safer format. I think it's saving more frequently to it or something. Anyway, we, we do the same thing here. We, we use audio hijack and we record in this MP4 format into that container. Uh, he, and he says, usually MP4 packages hold video, but they can just hold audio. That's fine. He says, or so I thought, but then I wanted to use capo, which we mentioned in the last show so that he could loop this little section of music and learn the guitar solo. Uh, he said, but capo doesn't understand MP4 files. It does, however, understand M4A files. He said, so I needed a way to extract the audio from the MP4 package uh, so that I could play it as an M4A. I didn't want to convert or transcode because that leaves artifacts. I just wanted to unpack or extract it. So I discovered GPack. And uh, he says it works really well. Very, very simple. He installed it with Mac ports. Uh, I was able to install it with homebrew here, just brew space, install space G pack. And it just put it out there. Uh, and if Fink, he says, will will do it as well. Uh, and it worked because it just pulls the audio out. Now, here's an interesting thing. And I think this might only work in this exact use case that Dave describes, because I do the same thing. We occasionally pre-record some segments of, of the show uh, and then we play them back, but we have like we do for our ads, right? I, I like to keep the ads tight. So when I have the opportunity, I will pre-record them, uh, so that I can play them back for you during the show. And it's, it's a tight thing and I'm not stumbling through, uh, an ad read. I can actually give it the time it deserves while keeping it short for all of you. But that means I have an MP4 file. And Evernote, which is what we use to kind of manage the show and the flow, won't play back. Exactly the same problem that Dave's, that listener Dave is having. But what I noticed is GPAC would do this. And now that I know about it, I might actually do that. But say for today's show, I did what I've always done. I simply renamed the file from filename.mp4 to filename.m4a. And magically, it plays as an audio file. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work, folks, <laughs> but it certainly does. And it has in uh, for several versions of, of OS 10 and then Mac OS. I think starting with El Capitan was the first time I, I even tried it. It may have worked prior to that. So interesting stuff. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave, for, for bringing this one up. That's always fun to trust. Yeah. I recall a similar trick. I don't know if it still works since they've totally destroyed iTunes. <laughs> But I remember the rename trick actually works for ringtones. I think you 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 rename them to M4R. Yes, that's why that's what made me think of of this is exactly mm -hmm. that. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I've done that trick. I mean, you can certainly go to the ringtone store. I don't know what they call it these right. days, but right. um, and pay real money for a ringtone. <laughs> but yeah, but if you have your own uh, audio file, yeah, if you, you rename it to M4R, then uh, last I checked. Uh, yeah. At least with my installation, I haven't installed new ones, but, uh, you know, they're, they're still working on my iOS devices. Yep. So. Yep. For sure. And then, um, you know, you mentioned, uh, iTunes and not being able to kind of manage some things like apps and, and that sort of thing that iTunes 12, seven brought into the world. Well, uh, Abby Vackel, the, uh, founder of, fast Mac and, and all that stuff. I'm trying to find his post. There it is. Uh, he posted earlier today that he found a page really kind of hidden on Apple site that, uh, that talks about how you can install iTunes 12.6.3, which unlike iTunes 12.6.2, will work with iOS 11. So we'll put his, his post in the, um, in the show notes here, because it, it, you can actually roll back to iTunes 12, six, three, if you, which came out, I think after iTunes 12, seven. So it's built to work with iOS 11 and manage apps. But as Abby also notes in his post, the fact that it's called 12, six, three and not say 12, seven, one, or whatever that would be indicates that this functionality is going away. Really. This is, uh, linked to a, a, a knowledge base article t 
titled Deploy Apps in a Business Environment with iTunes. And so this is for people with the volume purchase program and Apple configurator that want to be able to install apps with iTunes. So you can roll back to this. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of nuts, but, you know, uh, for now it's available. So iTunes. Sometimes you got to look back three. instead mm-hmm. of looking forward, Dave. I, I don't know. I, I, I um, it, yeah, I've kind of moved on. I, yeah. I don't. Someone in the chat room mentioned that they <clears throat> don't uh, aren't able to use M4R in iOS 11. Are you having problems in 11? I haven't had a problem with it mm-hmm. in 11. I've been able to put ringtones on a couple of different ways. You can still use iTunes to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, I won't uh, attempt to say his NCSUCP. It's, it's John. But... We just call him John. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Hey, John. <laughs> there it is. Not this John. But, but, no, but, different yeah. John. but I haven't added new ones, so it, it could be, in fact, that that has changed. But my existing ones that I did. Yeah. Like you, uh, I think. Mm. Uh, they worked out. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, one last. I, I don't know if I would call this a cool stuff found. I mean, I did call it a cool stuff found, so I guess I do. Uh, Robin writes. I just had to share this cool thing because I can't believe the information was there in plain sight and I didn't know. For historic reasons, I have a wireless network made up of Apple Time Capsule and Apple Airport Extremes and Airport Expresses. I was trying to track down a new rogue wireless connection being found by my Fingbox, which, by the way, is another cool thing found all on its own. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, in trying to track down this errant router, I found some really useful and well hidden in plain sight information in Apple's airport utility. If you open airport utility, you see all your airport routers. If you select one, you can choose to edit it. And that's all the normal stuff. But if you select it and then simply hover the mouse over the airport name, it will give you some really useful information on all of its Mac addresses and model. While the airport is selected, you can also see all the connected Wi-Fi clients. But if you hover over any of the clients, you will get to see connectivity status, connection status, connection speed, and a bunch of other useful information. This is uh, maybe I'm excited over something really silly, but I never knew this much information was in there hidden in plain sight. It's true. Yeah. Floating over stuff in the tool tips, as we call them in the airport utility can be very, very handy uh, if you're running Apple routers still. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Or just with a lot of Apple utilities holding down either option or command or maybe yeah. both reveals all sorts of wonderful secrets. Yeah. I found when I did use airport as my primary Mm. Uh, Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, the airport utility was uh, pretty good. And there was a lot of really good stuff, as pointed out, hidden underneath the covers, including like a really detailed, um, you know, connection tool saying, oh, here's everybody connected to you. And, you know, here's the channel I think you should go to. It's a. Uh, huh. I'm trying yeah, to remember. Cool. I, I, I think it's now. Where is it? Um, in the Wi-Fi menu, I think if, it, you know, for those that are still using the airport, if you go to the Wi-Fi menu or the, you know, the little blob up there uh, and you hold down option, um, you will get, uh, is it option? Yes, it is option. So you will get enable Wi-Fi logging, create diagnostic support and open wireless diagnostics as mysterious additional options to talk to your airport. Um, yeah, that's, so and that's that not just, that's not limited to people running airport stuff. Like you should be able to see that on your network, even though you don't have airport devices, John. I mean, I see the choices. I'm not sure how that's just your Mac creating that report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, uh, it's worth noting because, uh, you know, it's extra goodies there that you get for free. If you yeah, just for sure. Not to hold down the right keys. <laughs> he mentioned thing in his note to us. And thing is an interesting, uh, first of all, it's an interesting app. Uh, it's a great way to scan the network that you're on and see what everything is there. Uh, I just, I actually had to use it recently. I was at a, uh, a theater that I hadn't worked at before. And like most theaters now, thankfully they had a mixer that was iPad or, or iPhone addressable, which makes life super easy when I have to like, if I have an in-ear monitor mix or whatever, I can just use my iPhone or my iPad to mix my own ears. I don't have to drive the sound engineer crazy. It's great. But this particular board, uh, it's a, either a Mackie uh, Behringer board, sorry, or, or a Midas board, basically the same one. It doesn't announce itself 
So you have to know its IP address to connect to it, which is sort of in- interesting because most sound engineers don't know the IP address and you kind of have to dig around in the mixer to find it. And, you know, I had driven this engineer crazy with questions enough already. He was very, very nice. But I'm like, man, I, I, so I started guessing like, you know, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five. I didn't find it. I'm like, OK, I got to I got to ask him. And I thought, wait a minute, thing. And so I ran thing. And sure enough, it showed me every device on the network. And one of them was named like, you know, M32 dash something or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the mixer because it's a Midas M32 mixer. And I put in the address, which was dot 21. It would have taken me forever to get there. And uh, sure enough, I connected right up. So if you need to know anything about a network, uh, go download Fing. It's a very, very cool thing. Um, and then their their Fing box is is sort of one of these devices. In fact, we've got several of them, Cujo and 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 a few others that we're going to talk about possibly next week where it you route all of your traffic traffic through it. We talked about the Bitdefender one that was sort of behind the times uh, a while back, but it's they're one working of these, on it. They that? told me they're working on it. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, There's they're other gonna... people that have bought, passed them. And, and the show quickly. we went to, there was at least one or two other yeah. vendors that have similar, you know, I'm going to, take care of your network and yeah, network defense devices is, is what yes. I call them. Yep. And you just route stuff through it. And thing box is, is one of these, I haven't checked out the thing box yet, so I, I can't really speak to it, but, um, but yeah, so there you go. That's, that's what the thing box is. For now, those of you. I'm going to throw in yeah, man. a additional tip here, my friend, but um, please do. We didn't put it on the agenda, but I just ran this. And this is something to note here is that iOS 11 uh, put some restrictions on what iOS apps can do. Uh, yeah. Basically, I think it's ARP resolution. You don't so get to see is, the Mac address of of devices. Like the, the Thing app can show you a device's advertised name and IP address, but it cannot show you the Mac address. Right. And I'm looking right now, and the thing is, if you run Thing, and I just did this on iOS 11. It says switch to IP address identification. iOS 11 limits apps yeah. from accessing the list of Mac addresses, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And we're working with Apple to try to fix this. Uh, I don't know if they did it. As I don't a think they're going to fix measure. it. Yeah. I think it's, it's more locked down. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think they're going to do back. much. <laughs> well, the oh, thing here, is ARP. Go ahead and have a hack at it. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is ARP, which is address resolution protocol. It's a low level thing in TCP IP. And maybe other protocols, um, you can do bad things. Um, and I actually have Don't done these caught. in the past as far as <laughs> redirecting people to the wrong. Uh, when I was doing security work. Um, yeah, the thing is, you, you can trick devices into going to the wrong place by manipulating this ARP yeah. thing. Yeah. The, the, so, to my knowledge, there were no apps on iOS that could manipulate it, but they could at least read it. And now you don't get it, it's it really you just don't get to see Mac addresses. So, you just, but Fing is still rocking, and uh, and the Fing box. I look forward. Uh, I don't know if you got one or you know we should talk to them. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't have one. I have. I mean, they know what they're doing. Several I mean, of them, but not that just one. looking at the app. I mean, we saw them at CES. And, yeah. and the thing is, they know what they're doing yeah. as far as networking and. Uh, so I would I would consider a thing box as a, a likely candidate to secure my the, network. The real question about these, and this is why we haven't talked about them yet. I've had these for a while. Testing them takes some time because it, there's there's a lot of different aspects to it, and I, I'm not going to go too deep into it because we'll talk about it next week. But uh, hopefully, but you know, it's got to be able to process data fast enough that it doesn't slow down your connection. And with so many of these, including that Bitdefender box, which didn't even have a gigabit ethernet port, but they, they just, you know, if it, even if it maxes out at a couple hundred megabytes a second, it's like, okay, well, if your connection is slower than that, then great. And I realize most people's connections are, but there's a lot of people that have connections that are way faster than that. And you don't want to put some security box in that slows you down. So it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing and a very complex thing to evaluate, um, which is why it's been taken. Security so long. versus convenience. Fight it, again. It, it is exactly that. Where on that continuum do you want to be? That's it. Yeah, exactly. Are you willing to lose, you know, are you willing to have gigabit internet and yet only use 200 megabits a second so that you can have security? Uh, hmm. I get kind of, the kind of antsy when I think about yeah, that. Yeah. But maybe, when I looked at their device, they advertised, even though it was a hundred 
Yeah, the thing is that the, the, the processing involved in watching the traffic will slow you down. It, well, it kind of has if to. If the processor... Well, if the processor is wimpy. Right. Well, I mean, not beefy enough. I don't even want to say wimpy. I mean, we're talking about real-time packet inspection. It takes a lot to do that. So, yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of iOS 11, let's run uh, over here to Jed's question. Did I? I, I uh, oh, yeah. We might as well run to Jed's question. I, I, I think Pete right, jumped us there. on the agenda yeah, with where the thing box is. And so anyway, <laughs> Uh, it's fine. We'll, I, we'll sort it no, all I, out. I just was getting rid of some of those bullet points, Dave, to help you out. Yeah. I was making you more organized. Yeah, you sure were. <laughs> Here's your buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Jed says, this is more of a Google and iPhone geek gab question, but you're all I've got. It's totally fine, man. We talk about all kinds of stuff here. He says, I created a calendar for my school's PTA uh, in Google Calendar. He says, I added an iCal link button on it hoping that people will be able to add it and have a live synced calendar. But I'm sitting here with someone who has an iPhone and that link doesn't add it or it adds events, not as a live calendar. So I tested this out and sure enough. Yeah. Google is just publishing a list of events that you could slurp into another calendar on your phone, but you're not going to be able to subscribe live to this Google calendar. Um, without having a Google account that that's, that's been my experience with all of what? this. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to join a Google calendar, you have to do it with your Google account. I've never found a way to publish. Really? really? Huh. That's why I'm saying these words. Yeah. Um, I've not, I hear, found... I hear what you're saying. I'm yeah. just thinking in the world of standards and maybe there's too many these days well why would this be the case but i guess everybody has their yeah, own well little i mean path. it it would be possible for google to publish to allow you to publish your calendar as um a subscribable thing but i have not found a way to do that there are calendars that are subscribable that you could subscribe either on google you know you just put in a webcal dot dot colon slash slash address or whatever Mm. And and iCloud can subscribe to those, but um, but Google doesn't seem to publish in that format. So uh, or allow you to publish your calendar in that format. So you yeah. in order to connect to a Google calendar, you would need to add a Google account to your uh, to your iPhone, which I mean, is very doable. And then you could you can turn on or off all kinds of things and you could just turn off everything but calendar and sync to that. It's not uh, it's not perfect. I, if there is a way, I'd love to know it because that would be kind of great to be able to publish a calendar out that um, that anyone could use. But I don't see a way to do it with your, you know, your personal Google calendar. Uh, and I've tried. It's uh, John in the chat room is saying uh, that he has organizations that do it, but he doesn't know how they, they get it done. So perhaps there is a way and we'll leave that as a geek challenge if somebody knows. That'd be great. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to know it. But yeah, otherwise, if you want to subscribe to calendars, um, they've got to be part of that engine. You know, you need to be part of that engine. That's been my experience. Because two billion users registered is not enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, they want you registered with them. That's right. That's Pete, right. It's, it's all they've free. They've only got two billion. There's, it's all free. There's at least five more billion people on the planet that should be registered users. Correct. That's okay. right. That's right. And, um, yeah, while we're here, uh, do you have, wait, do you have any thoughts on that, John, before we, before we move on? Standards are wonderful in that there are so many of them. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I, I guess my question, you keep saying standards and I, I, I guess my well, question is, I, I get emails. So for example, you know, a lot of my, like my physicians, like my dentist sends out an email saying, Hey, you know, uh, you know, you got an appointment coming up. Uh, do you want to put it on your iCal? Do you want to put it on your Google Cal? Do so you we're talking about two very different things, yeah. right? Because what you're talking about is exactly what he's doing or what yes. Google allows him to do. No, no, no. Because what that is, is a dot ICS file. And that is a standard mm -hmm. thing, but that is just static appointment data. So when you're, when you say, yeah, I want to download the ICS file and add it to my calendar, you're adding it to your calendar. You're reporting to your, yeah, to your account. Right. You're not subscribing to some calendar that your, uh, that your dentist 
Mm. Uh, you know, sends you. Yeah, it's an event versus a, a subscription. Correct. Yeah. I, yeah, I get that. You're right. And that's what I'm saying. So it, that works fine. And that standard does. I just don't know, like, what standard we're talking about here for subscribing to a ever changing calendar. Like, for example, we publish our Mac Geek Gab, uh, calendar and, if, and you can go to MacGeekGab.com slash calendar and subscribe in iCal or BusyCal and, and that'll work. To my knowledge, you can't subscribe to that in Google Calendar. So there I'm you sorry. go. Um, uh, Dave, I, I, you know, it I, seems to me, I think there's a link. They create a link that allows people to either join and edit or join and read only. For, for iCloud. Google, for Google Calendar. Okay. And I'm, with, I'm a Google, for, with a Google account? I think you may that's, have to That's have, what I'm I saying. I don't Is know it, if you have it, to have the Google account or not. I'm trying to look at it right now, but... And it's so John in the chat room is, is saying that, that you can create this link that will let you subscribe without having a Google account. And, and so what I would love to know, John, and, and we can follow up and if you can't get it done before the end of this show, that's fine. But um, how in Google you go and, and modify the calendar to do that. So that would be, that would be the trick. So like what where he's, he's got a URL that he's telling us all about, which is great. My question is, how do you create that URL? And uh, and if we can get there before the end of the show, we'll come back around. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it, 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 it would be I, t like I said, to my knowledge, you have calendars that you can subscribe to in your Google. You have calendars you can, you can subscribe to with um, with, you know, iCloud, whichever client you choose to use. But Facebook, we, we use Facebook for our events, right? I mean, they're everywhere. So what are you saying, though? Where are you subscribing to this Facebook calendar? It just appears in my calendar. I have no idea what's going on. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> that, right. That's yet another thing that, that you're, you're connecting to as a different account. It's not, it, it's not iCloud getting to yeah. that uh, right on my google calendar i pulled down uh, you know more details on my calendar and there's a check mark where you can say make this calendar public and it says if you choose public all of your calendar information will be available to anyone including your details so that doesn't tell me that a google account holder only a gmail only say that again if you choose public all yes. of your calendar information will be available to anyone including your event details. So I'm assuming someone can th import that into BusyCal, into Calendar, into iOS Calendar. And where are you doing this? You, uh, If you're in your Google Calendar, yeah. you, right next to your name, there's a little down arrow and you click on that yep. and you say, and it says more information, I think it was what it was. Okay. Let me, let me back that calendar up. Calendar yeah. details. So next to my yep. name on there, uh, it's calendar settings. No, no, I'm sorry. Share this calendar. You click on share this calendar and share this calendar with others. I've shared it with everyone in this organization, which is my family. And one of your options is to check, make this calendar public. And next to that is learn more. If you choose public, all of your calendar information will be available to anyone, including event details. So that uh, may be the answer to his question. It may it may, well, that's what I'm saying yeah. is, is, yeah. is that the I, answer? Yeah. yeah, I'm not willing to take my private calendar right. <laughs> public. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Moose out front should have told you. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's the question. And maybe that is. Maybe that's the the key. It's a definite maybe. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not more definitive on it and faster. Yeah. No. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem like anybody has that answer. So that's it's interesting. So it, we'll see. Maybe John in the chat room will will understand the question we're asking and and get there with us. Um, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, for the moment, moving on in iOS. So I was actually working with my dad the other night uh, with his phone, and he's had a microcell forever. He had i an iPhone. Uh, what was it? It was a five. Uh, I don't know. He, he moved from a five series that would not do Wi-Fi calling to an iPhone seven. Right. And, uh, and he's had a, he has a micro cell at his house cause he's got kind of sort of crummy service and he's had it there forever and it was working fine and he's moving. So we turned off the micro cell and I said, well, we're leaving your Wi-Fi on, you know, temporarily. So you'll just connect to that, but his phone wouldn't connect to that. 
And so I went in on, you know, into I, I went into to settings, phone, and sure enough, Wi-Fi calling was off. And so this is not something mm. that's turned on automatically. And now, to be clear, Dave, a microcell is a device that AT and T will provide you if your coverage sucks. To, For a mere hundred fifty honest. clams, mm. <laughs> provide well, you it, after you pay they, them. They will provide you with a device that extends, allegedly extends your cellular and maybe. Well, well it doesn't. Wi-Fi. It doesn't extend. So what a what a microcell is okay. is it connects. Go. It connects to your local network in your house and broadcasts a cell signal from there. Uh, so that that's what a microcell does. But they won't sell you one anymore no. because you don't need it because you can get a phone that supports Wi-Fi calling, which essentially does the same thing. You're leveraging the Internet connection that you have locally to get cell service to your phone, except with a with Wi-Fi calling. It's doing it direct Wi-Fi to your phone as opposed to with a microcell. It is the thing that talks over the Internet, and then it, it has a little tiny little cell service circuit in it, which is why they call it a microcell, and it broadcasts that out. So you can get cell service in places where you might not otherwise be able to get it. But Wi-Fi calling was not on by default, which really shocked me. Hmm. Uh, it, it, it just seemed to me like this would be something that, that had been turned on. He actually got that iPhone 7 at an AT&T store, so he went there to upgrade. I, I just... I, so I put it on our list for today because it's entirely possible. There are many, many of you listening that don't have Wi-Fi calling enabled. And there's really no reason not to enable it, assuming your phone supports it, which most of the, the newer iPhones do. And I got news for you. Yeah, there man. are many people who have enabled it who don't have it. I was one of them. Really? Yes. And we turned it on. Debbie was complaining to me about her phone not working well our, and our M cell died for the second time and i'm like well even if they would sell it to me i'm not about to drop another m- money for more m cell so i i said listen wi-fi calling it works great lasts a long time i have it on my own phone i went in and i turned it on and i gave it phone back to her and two months later she's so griping i can't hear anything i have to stand at the front door on my right foot with my left arm in the air and spin around while i'm talking to people in order to be able to complete a call and the worst part of this is she does business from the home like, oh, so she griping about it again the other day, and I'm like, something's wrong here. I went in and looked, Wi-Fi calling turned off. I went, well, why'd you turn your Wi-Fi calling off? No wonder you can't complete calls. So I turned it on and went to give it back to her. And just before I handed it to her, I saw a little note pop up, and then it went away. And it told me, you need to contact your carrier. And on. what carrier do you yeah, have? Uh, AT&T. Okay, so one, the, one, they one were the, the big, first ones to support <laughs> yeah, Wi-Fi calling. One of the big ones. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. So, so I went and tried to turn it on again. So, you know, I said, okay, well, something's wrong here. I rebooted the phone, turned it back on. The little note pops up, says call, contact your carrier, and then, and then it turns off. So if you aren't fast enough or you aren't paying attention, you think you have Wi-Fi calling enabled and you don't. I actually had to go change out the SIM card at the AT&T store because the gal on oh, on tech support told me. No, that's right. Yeah. She the goes, SIM needs to support Wi-Fi calling. She, she goes, yeah, this SIM card doesn't. And, and yeah. And, that's and correct. And they'll comp it for you. It's like a $35 fee or something like that to go, don't worry, you're not paying for that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. And so, I, but we thought, I had thought I had Wi-Fi calling on on her phone for months and, and it wasn't there. It wasn't there. So, yeah. Wow. So, turned it on and, and now- She's happy well, with it. Works yeah. great. Lasts a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great sound. <laughs> it's right. Yeah, you get because right because you yeah. get HD calling. Yeah. Uh, just like you would if you were connected to an LTE circuit. Right. With, yeah. You know, with five which you five, don't right? get with the microcell. Right. Because right? the microcell only acts as a four G. Yeah. So you don't get HD calling yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. So boy, was that frustrating. <laughs> So to throw this into the ring, so I'm with Verizon right now, and I'm very happy with them. I have no complaints with them. Number one, at least with Verizon. Um, up in the menu bar of your iOS device, you will see, and I'm looking at mine right now, and it says VZW Wi-Fi because it's saying, dude, your Wi-Fi is stronger than my cell signal, so uh, I'm going to go with Wi-Fi. Is that okay? And uh, I guess it is. The other thing I, I see in in the notes that Dave made here is that it it's, well, it's not unusual for the providers to have different paths so what I see in yours, Dave, that you say settings, phone, Wi-Fi calling is the path that you take 
I, I believe with AT&T. With AT&T, that's right. Yep. Uh, with Verizon, just for my Verizon peeps, um, you go to settings, cellular. And then within that screen is a Wi-Fi calling, which you can enable or yeah, disable. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, that's that's the same. You, if you go to settings phone, you'll also see Wi-Fi calling there. You can get there both ways. Mm. Right? If, if you go on your phone, because I, I see Wi-Fi calling yeah. if I go to settings cellular. But if you go to settings phone, do you also see it there? Uh, let's see here. Settings. Uh, we're going to do live. I do not have a settings phone category. Yeah, you do. It's down. It's it's down a, a oh, ways. Down, down, down. Ah, there it is. All right. Phone. Wi-Fi calling. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. in it's in different places. Yeah. So okay. it's not different but, um, per carrier. It's 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 iOS eleven. Okay. But yeah, um. Yeah. But at least Verizon doesn't. I mean, I never had to ask them for permission. I think they just enabled it at some point. So, uh, you know, good for them. Yeah. Well, cool. you know, you know, it's got to lift their uh, tech support headaches way off when people aren't having roaming issues and calling and going, I got terrible service. That was the best thing they could ever do was to support that. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, right. Yep. Very, very cool. All right. So make sure to check that. Because it's good stuff. It's good, it's good stuff. All right. We had a couple of questions from the last episode that I want to go through here. But um, but the first thing that I want to do, um, guys, is I want to – actually, I want to talk about our two sponsors, if, uh, if that works for both of you. Eh, not really. No. Oh, of course. We love our sponsors. All right. I'm going to keep this first sponsor really short. It's Barebones Software at barebones.com. You've heard me talk about them before. We talk about them when they're sponsors, of course, because they pay us to do that like they are right now. We also talk about them all the time when we're just discussing things in the show because it's a utility that John and I both use regularly. I have it open right now on my computer. I use it all the time. And here's the deal. It's available to you for free. So go to barebones.com, download BB Edit. Anything you need to do with text, you don't have to be a programmer to use it and to get value out of it. But if you are a programmer, you'll get even more value. But if you need to count words or compare two documents, it, and it makes it so easy when you're comparing stuff right there, you got to just go check it out. Go to barebones.com, download BB Edit. You can use it for free. They do have a paid upgrade, but most of you, frankly, probably aren't going to need that. So just go download the free version. Barebones.com. Our thanks to Barebones for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor for today is Jamf Now. That's J-A-M-F Now. Jamf Now helps you manage your Apple devices from anywhere. So this is geared towards people running a business. But trust me on this. Listen, because... You might find a reason that you want to use this, too, and you can use it for free in a limited sense. Then that limit might be enough. So bear with me. When you first start your business, you know, it's pretty easy to keep track of your own computer and your phone. But as you start to grow your business and you buy more tech for your employees and people that are working for you, it gets harder to keep track of everyone's Macs, iPhones, iPads. Figuring out how to secure the iPad that your sales rep lost can be tough, especially when you're in different locations. Jamf now makes that and a lot more way easier. You can configure settings, protect sensitive information, even lock or wipe a device remotely from anywhere. It's like magic. Jamf now secures your stuff so you can focus on your business. Instead, no IT expertise needed. You do it from a web browser on anything. It just works. It leverages Apple's MDM tech that we talk about here with Apple Configurator. But this is the remote control version of that. Very cool. Here's the deal. Mac Geek Gab listeners can visit jamf.com slash MGG, J-A-M-F dot C-O-M slash M-G-G. And you can set up your first three devices for free for life. After that, each device is just two bucks a month per device. So go create your free account today, jamf.com slash MGG. Here's the thing. I promised you, even if you didn't have a business, you might be interested. Ever want to manage your parents' iPhone or a relative's iPhone or even a customer's iPhone? I guess if you have a customer, you have a business. But 
update. You get my point. You can manage all this stuff, tweak settings, control things for people remotely makes things way easier. Go check it out. Jamf.com slash MGG. Our thanks to Jamf and Jamf now for sponsoring this episode. All right. Yeah. So let's go through some of these things from the last show, which I've got to find now because it seems Bang. like they keep things. Well, things. you know, follow-ups, questions, things like that. Right, John? Don't you think? Yeah. We All almost right. have some. Yeah. And we thank you for those. No, it's great. I, it, it keeps it moving. It's good. Uh, from 677, Guido wrote in and asked. I think it's Gui. Is it Gui? I thought he liked Gui. Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, sorry. Right. Guido. Uh, go ahead. Hey. Right. It's Guido. Well, if, I, if, if it's G-U-I, wouldn't that be Gui? Remember Father Guido Sarducci? I don't know. It, 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 it depends on, on whether I we're talking about. I know we got a pronunciation French of pronunciation a correction or, at one point. Yeah, so right. our, our apologies. All right. Our Guido writes. Uh, or Guy, or it, it doesn't, I mean, your name is yours, whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, he says, Dave mentioned in show 677 that he now shares his iCloud storage with six family members, including his almost grown up kids and his very grown up parents. This means, in my opinion, that all six are part of his Apple family. That is correct. Uh, he says, but doesn't this also mean that all app purchases from his kids and parents are charged to his credit card? Or how does he prevent that? Uh, they can all buy apps, etc., and charge his card. This is what has held me back to include my adult sons and their wives slash girlfriends into my Apple family. Thanks for helping. Yeah, no, you're totally right that um, my credit card is what gets charged for their purchases when cash is involved. But the trick is doing this with iTunes gift cards. Now, the the overreaching principle to remember, and this is both a benefit at times and an absolute curse at times, is that iTunes gift cards only apply to the single person whose account they are attached to. So if, say, my son wants to buy an app, if he doesn't have any gift cards associated with his account, then it bills my credit card. But if my son has a gift card associated with his, with his account, then it dings his gift card first until he runs that out. And then, of course, he doesn't have one in it. Really? It, it, it's my credit card. Uh, yeah. Uh. But here's so that's where that works. But again, remembering gift cards are only available to be used by the person whose account they are on means that if I have gift cards on my account and my son goes to buy something, it will charge my credit card. Whereas if I go to buy the very same thing, it would charge my gift card. So there's no way, even though my son, because he's part of my, you know, he's, he's a part of the family, even though he can charge my credit card, he can't charge my gift cards, which drives me crazy because I load up with gift cards. do that first. Sure. And yeah. Especially does. when they're on sale at Christmas time and that, you know, yes. why pay full price? Well, let me ask this though. If he's, if he has a gift card on his account and yep. he's signed into his Apple ID on yep. his phone it'll charge to that does he not or is he yeah, signed then into that's fine. your store account no he signed into his account okay. but he's part of my family my iCloud Boy, family that's a really blurry line and now I'm confused again sorry well again just remember <laughs> gift cards are only usable by one person sure. that's really the way it, it it goes um but the benefits of having everybody on a family account and you can have up to 6 total uh, are are numerous. Number one, you share purchases, right? App purchases, right? So so that's great because if my son's on the same, yeah, right, you only if, buy an app once. Yeah, if I bought the app and my son goes to buy it, it'll say, "Hey, you don't need to buy this." Now it's not entirely clear that that's what's going to happen. But if he signed into the family, if he signed if, into his own account, no, then no. it won't show. So really? yes, okay, the, his really account good. is okay. part of the family, uh, and that's that's there's no other way to be signed in. So once I make him part of the family, anything he does is is part of the family. Wow. So we get that, which is good. But we also get Apple Music. You buy a family plan for 15 bucks a month, six people involved. That's good. And they, yeah. again, each have their own Apple Music accounts, but we pay once for the family. Also, as uh, our, our listener uh, of perhaps potentially varying names suggested, uh, as we mentioned last week, we now can share a storage pool. So I buy 10 bucks worth of two terabytes of storage every month and everybody gets to use iCloud photo library and backup. And we're not even close to hitting two terabytes and it's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that brings in the whole Lisa takes photos on her phone. You take photos on yours. Are they merging the library? They are not merging libraries. Yeah, there's the problem. Right. They're not merging libraries. They're just sharing storage. (laughs) Okay. Right. 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 Yep. Now she can share an out. We can share an album with each other. And then that is shared and that's fine. Create an album with all photos in it. Uh, Could you do that? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think we could share a smart album. Because that's what you're talking yeah. about. I mean, you could manually dump all your photos into an album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that just gets tedious. I'm making this it hard, is. Dave. I no, know no. it, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but like when, you know, when, when we take vacations together or whatever, uh, we'll create an album for that trip. And then we all just sort of pump things into it. And then everybody has it. That's the way to do Going it. forward. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I know that Apple charges folks for storage. Um, and I know that other companies like Google and Amazon, uh, Amazon, yeah, I guess let you do photo storage for free at some level. Um, and that's frustrating. I, I'm with you. But once you sort of get over that and start paying Apple the 10 bucks a month for storage so that you can use iCloud photo library, man, life gets so much better <laughs> It's because it's so integrated. I, I love it. Yeah. Cause it, it, it optimizes it on your phone. Yeah. You know, you don't always yeah. have a full one. The only problem is I'm on the airplane a lot. So I'll go to pull up like a short video I shot and eh, not so much. It's not there. Right. But, but that's okay. Right. Right. But yeah. You gotta get, you gotta get uh wifi on your planes, man. <laughs> we have it, but not for us. It's right. for the plane to talk to the company. Okay. You know, when they pull up yeah. to the gate, you know, and I say, understand. hey, he landed hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Big brother's watching. <laughs> yeah, of course they are. Yeah. But really, I, you know, yeah. it's like iCloud Photo Library is so well done. I, I'm, re- I'm really impressed with it. So you 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 are using iCloud Photo Library, right, John, or no? No, I use the streaming. So I use Photo Stream. You use but Photo I do Stream, know. yeah, okay. Yeah, but I do not use iCloud for the library. Though I may reconsider that. It's I, I, I like I said, it, you know, I know it sucks to pay for it, but man, it's just well, I just it's found so a, good. I mean, the thing is, I just got a sweet deal on a iTunes card, which if you look hard enough, you can find. And I think right now, I I have like a hundred dollar plus balance on my uh, yeah. iTunes account. So maybe I will. I mean, I did. And that's you know, the right did, way to do it because I mean, I did throw down the cash to get the additional storage beyond the what? Five gigs or yeah. 10 gigs or whatever they offer now. It's five. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got 50. So yeah, I think that's a, a dollar a month. Okay. I, right. I can, you know, I can handle that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you but might I'm considering. Not need- you might not need two terabytes, right? You might be able to do, you might do okay with whatever. I think there's a 200 gig plan or something like that. So there is. Yeah. They have various plans. And I think if I wanted to move to the next level, um, I think it's only a few bucks more a month. And, yeah. Uh, then iCloud would, would handle my rather huge photo library. How big is your library? Yeah, it's it's over 100 gigs. I mean, okay, it's, it's so basically two, all the, so fo- the it's all the digital photos that I've ever it's all the digital photos that I've ever taken. Sure. Um Yeah, I think it's 100 or 150. Yeah. And I'm not the only one. A lot of a lot of uh, long-time Mac users have oh, no. photo libraries if you use Apple. That's Oh yeah. Massive no, Lee, gigabytes. Lisa, Lisa's library is almost 300 gigs. Which is great. I mean, it, it you know, and it's all in the cloud now and just right. oh, it's killer. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah. me, um, now that I have the, uh, well, upstream that you used to be jealous of, mm-hmm. but not anymore. <laughs> my my <laughs> jealousy know, 30, caused I, me to spend some money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got 35 gigs upstream. So, yeah, it, it would take a while to get that whole thing up in the cloud, but um, I can handle it. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. Well, while we're talking about Apple products that, that actually uh, are fantastic, I want to take a minute. <laughs> No, no, no. And, and talk about the AirPods, right? Because I've been using AirPods now for several months and I have to say, I should not like these things, right? They are, I've never been impressed with the sound of Apple's um, earbuds or, you know, AirPods. Well, the AirPods were a 
Yeah. Number I, one, in ear, dude. And number two, I, I think it wasn't the highest quality. Right. Audio. I never, never was impressed with them. Never liked the sound. Never liked the, the fit, the comfort. None of that with ear pods or, or even the prior ones, the earbuds. And um, and I'm a I'm an audio snob. Uh, I'm picky about the way things work. Yeah. And so I thought, OK, well, I, I need to try out the AirPods. So I, you know, I, I got a pair I, I, and I, I bought them. I, you know, these weren't a review unit or anything. I, I waited my six weeks or whatever. And actually, I, I didn't even talk about this on the show. I don't think uh, because I wanted to test them out before we talked about it. But they they got um, I think somebody at FedEx wound up with an extra pair of of AirPods because they <laughs> made, I, it wasn't me. No they one made saw it, me. You can't prove a thing. <laughs> they made it to Memphis, Pete. And that's where they stopped. But uh, I but, was off that day. No one saw me. <laughs> but Apple shipped out another one and it's fine. Um but uh, when like these things, they're they're comfortable. Like I almost don't notice they're in my ear. So there's no discomfort with it. I, I I'm used to in ear earphones. I mean, at the moment, I'm using a set of JH Audio Layla's as my uh, monitors because they're reference monitor. But they're, you know, custom fit in ears. But these are not they don't seal at the AirPods. And so I thought I wouldn't like that about them. But man, they're comfortable. They stay in. I have, uh, I've, I've worn them when playing my drums. I've worn them walking around in numerous cities. I've worn them on the bow of a boat going about 25 knots with the wind right in my face. And I, I turn my head every direction possible. Not only did they not fall out in any of those scenarios, they didn't even move. Like they just stay in. And the sound is good. It's they defy not, gravity. They do. You, you yeah. Know, it, the sound is good. It's not the, they're definitely not the best earphones I've ever heard, but I don't expect them for to For something be. so tiny. I mean, come on. I mean, how, how much quality are you going to get out of a. Dude, the dude. things I have in my ear now are smaller than AirPods oh, and right. are the best sound quality I've ever heard in my life in a, in a headphone. Okay. So, yes, so it's you possible. Get you, so you get what you pay for, because from what I understand, you get the custom ones like you put a. Yeah thing in your ear and they There's, mold it and i have it's 12 like, you know, drivers it's, it's, in each of my ears at the moment and uh, it's very personal yes. i mean they, <laughs> that is yeah, a I very mean, you, personal you, thing to have I mean, what do you do do you do you actually put something in your ear like a mold and then they they all right so 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 hold that question or let's not yeah. no no no. Yeah. that's a good it's a great question yeah. and i and i know people are interested Inside but baseball. let's just let's just come yeah let's just come around to it so it, we'll finish up the airpods and then i'll answer that um with with these airpods uh, the sound it, it, like, and I've worn them on airplanes too. So on the boat and on an airplane and playing my drums, they're not my favorites because they don't seal. And so sound gets in wind sound, the noise of the engines, all that sort of thing on the airplane. It, it's just, you got to crank them all the way up to hear them. And I know if I'm cranking them up, I'm damaging my hearing because I'm operating at full blast, even though it doesn't sound like I'm operating at full blast. So That's that's right? frustrating. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay. they aren't the best airplane. No, they're not. They're not built for the airplane. Which, you know, they need active noise canceling to do that. If they're going to do that. At, yeah, but in order to do active noise canceling, you need to, well, you need to seal. <laughs> yeah. 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 And But here's the thing. Like walking around in a city, uh, not having them seal is awesome because I can leave them at a very low volume. I can listen to music or a podcast, whatever I want, and I'm still totally aware of my surroundings I can hear things. It's, I mean, it's fantastic. I really love these things. And it, and, and so they're worth the 129 bucks for all the reasons I just told you. And they're also worth another 129 bucks because it's absolutely the best Bluetooth headset I've ever used in my life. And you get it all together as one. They are stellar. Like I, I, I there's nothing I've used that's better than this. And I've tried out a ton of high end Bluetooth headsets. These just work. Let me say a couple other things. Yeah. Too. You, 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 the cool thing is you can use them one at a time if need be. Either ear. Yeah. yeah either ear. Yep. One at a time. Um, if you have both in and you take it out of your ear, take one out of your ear, talk to somebody in a yeah. line at a store. It pauses your podcast. It pauses your music, whatever. Stick it back in. It goes, oh, you ready to listen to more? Starts it back up again. Amazing. And then the whole back and forth with one ear or the other, when you put it in the case, the case has a little battery in it. recharges. Yep. So it, you go all day and you never have to recharge. My, my only and, complaint 
is yes. there is the Find My iPhone app, right? Yeah, it would be nice to <laughs> it, be able to. And it, it will find your AirPods if they're not in the case. Really? I didn't know so that. Does okay. the case, How does that work? I saw you post about that, Dave. Yeah. So does the, do you believe the case shields? The no, no. RF? The case turns, turns everything off. off. Turns That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. So when you put them in the case, they power down. Right. And the case oh, powers right. down, too. Like, the case is intelligent. If I open the case near my phone, I get a little sheet that, that sort of appears on my phone and shows me the battery level of both the case and of the AirPods. Yeah. But... Um, but but when the case is closed, it never wakes up, not even for a little bit. And so these things will go missing for me for days. So so in theory, with a software update, they could fix that for you. I, you know what? That's true. Yeah, because all it would need is like the case to wake up once an hour and just right. say, hey, anybody I'm looking here. for me? Right. <laughs> I'm looking. Anybody looking for me? Nope. OK. okay. Yeah. And the case so has its own battery. May, yeah. uh, I understand that one or two people at Apple may listen to us. So right. perhaps your feature request That's will true. reach them. And maybe they could put it. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, in the in the selection saying, hey, you know, uh, it'll draw some power, but um, it, it'll provide you with the functionality that you want. I like it. Yeah. And, and you actually there are some things. There are accessories. There's some cool ones that have like a little strap that fit around the the yeah. shaft down at the bottom, so you can hang them around your neck if you want to. And the other one was the uh, the ear buddies, and they get it's like a little rubber hook, and they fit on there. Provides a little bit more of a seal. I can listen to mine on the airplane with the with the ear buddies in. I believe um, that you know. And so I, there's a picture of it. Okay. It's like a, it almost looks like a nice. something on a, a yeah. other Bluetooth headset. But, but I gotta say, Dave, I saw more than one person as you probably did when we did our Manhattan uh, venture and I did another one, I saw more than one person uh, during my MTA uh, subway ventures that clearly had these devices in their ears. Because oh yeah. They're quite uh, <laughs> oh, just I, like the crummy Apple, uh, you know, standard ear, ear pods or whatever the hell they call them. Um, yeah. I saw Plenty of people wearing them, and they all seem to be pretty happy about it. Oh, that. it's awesome. You know, I was in New York again this week for the Sonos uh, uh, oh, Sonos yeah. One event, got right? Some nice stuff and, going on. Yeah. And um, <laughs> this is crazy. I got off the plane, walked through the airport, went outside. I flew into Newark. I uh, walked outside, was waiting for my Uber to take me into town. My Uber gets there. I start walking toward the Uber and I feel like there's something on the bottom of my foot, but something's not right. And I get in the Uber and realize the <laughs> heel of my shoe has now like totally disintegrated. And, it, you know, I was only going overnight. And so I yeah. it's the well, one just trip. New Jersey, man. It's Sorry. the one trip I've done in years where I didn't bring a second pair of shoes. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, crap. And I was but I was staying in the Lower East Village. And so I thought, OK, fine. So I, I like ripped the heel off of my shoe and it was functional, but it obviously wasn't comfortable. But I could walk and it wasn't going to like hurt me or anything. And so six blocks away, there was a shoe store or whatever for my hotel. But I put my AirPods in and I walked down to the shoe store and I bought, no, bought more shoes. But um, and I threw my old ones away because, you know, no heel it sucked. It's, it's crazy. But uh yeah, it they're they're really they're stellar. I'm 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 really blown away with with the job that Apple has done. I I will say this. I believe that the AirPods are the single best product that Apple has new product that Apple has announced in the Tim Cook era. Like by far. By yeah, far. I've heard, I've heard the same. And for you as an audio That's the thing is I, I Nato, I would I would say that your opinion counts i almost friend. felt embarrassed th th how much i liked them and i've i've run into other you know audio nuts and and we all have the same reaction it's like okay right we can we can talk about this right that we like these things it's okay yep we can talk about it it's okay yeah yeah, yeah they're great but i think of anything <laughs> Again, they're not the make, best sound it, it's I, making up it, for yeah. the totally crummy experience i've never used the ear pods that came with any eye device no in my ears, device. because number one, right. I'm not really an ear in in ear person. I'm right. more a headphone person. And yeah. even when I tried them, I was like, 
Yeah, these suck, man. And they fall out of my ears. You know, but uh, apparently Apple did, uh, under Tim, an excellent, outstanding job of making the UI slash UX of this to be oh, a, a pleasure. It's and, a pl- it, That's what it is. It's a total pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. And that it, it does you know, what and you here's want. The thing. It like, does what you need. Yes. And uh, you don't have to think about it. Every other pair of ear earphones that I have also cannot be found by my iPhone when they're off. <laughs> Right. Let, let's point. I mean, let's be fair here. Yep. There's nothing that I own that can do this one thing that I've complained about with the AirPods. But it's simply because the AirPods work so well in every other way and are intuitive in every other way that this isn't glaring. That's what you want it to do. Sure. It's, right. Wow. Sure. Yeah. That's the only reason I'm compla- I'm complaining about it. So. And now, the one, oh, and the one thing we haven't mentioned about it is the microphone quality on phone calls is outstanding. No one knows you're on a yeah, headset. No, no, it's bizarre. Stellar. Because I've had some wow. headsets and people, all right, you're in a can. I can't hear yeah. you. you know? yeah, yeah. Don't get that at I all. I had that piece when I used early, very early, like version one Bluetooth headsets. I mm-hmm. could have people telling me, you're talking on a headset. Your audio sucks. And uh, right. yeah, they've gotten past that. The audio quality of Bluetooth is Some haven't, a lot better. though, John. I had some, I had some of the early, I hate to drop a brand name here. I had some early LG Bluetooth headsets. The, the microphone quality was good. People are like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Sound, you know? Oh, yeah. And then, but recently, oh, the, the I had a $170 pair recently, and, and I couldn't, I gave them to my son. My 11-year-old son has a $170 pair Bluetooth headset because the microphone was so bad yeah. in them. I couldn't The Plantronics stuff is good. Yeah. I, that was okay. what I yeah. used, the 5200 yeah. or whatever, before I got AirPods, and now it's like, if it's well, I, I still use yeah. that when I can't find yeah. my AirPods. The ones that I think are designed for calling are pretty good, but some of the stereo Bluetooth headsets yeah. are... Are yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. All right, and so to traumatize you guys, mm-hmm. the thing is, I still use, as does some people in my family, like my sister, we still use analog headsets. Yeah, well, you what? won't what? use that when you get a new iPhone. That's though. crazy talk, John. There's, I mean, well, it, no, I, I have the adapter. Dude, <laughs> I still have an old digital to analog. I still have a wireless. Uh, o- order a yourself some AirPods. I, I'm actually curious. You no, as, I'm, 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 I'm considering it because of your. Yeah, you as someone who enthusiastic who review, does not who does not like in ear stuff. I'm really curious. It doesn't how you feel, feel like it's in ear because of that seal. I think I can throw down the coin. Yeah. And get some. Yeah. Um, like I, a, so to answer your question, to move on, it, we'll, we'll, I'll answer this and, and we'll see where we are time wise. Yeah, but the, uh, in the terms form of factor thing, yeah, in terms of getting custom fit earphones. So the old way, which is still done by most uh, companies, is that you go to an audiologist and they squirt goop in your ear, Ooh. each ear. Uh, and then depending on how you're having them made, they might tell you, have your mouth open, have your mouth closed. Um, but you leave it like that for about five minutes. The goop sort of solidifies in your ear. They pull it out and they give you your molds that you, that they, that they just took out of your ear. Yeah. You ship those off to whatever company is going to make you your earphones. And usually you can get your audiologist to do the, the, the aforementioned molding impressions for like 50 bucks. Um, you know, that's about what you're going to pay. And then from there, you ship those off to whatever company's going to make them. Um, most recently, the, the ones that I'm wearing right now, I had done that way um, just this past year from their JH Audio. Jerry Harvey, uh, that's where the JH comes from. He was the person who founded a company called Ultimate Ears, which is one of the first ones that was doing this. He wound up selling Ultimate Ears. There's actually a great Gig Gab interview that we did with Jerry about how he sold that company and he didn't want to, but he kind of had to. Um, investors forced him to do that. But um, anyway, he uh, he made this this set that I have for me. Like I said, they're the Layla's from him. Uh, they're they're re- they're built as reference monitors. So they're they're built to do exactly what I'm doing here, either with a podcast or if you're mixing music. Uh, they've got 12 drivers per ear. It's insane, uh, but they are stellar and they sound crystal clear. But um, and they're perfectly comfortable because they're custom fit to my ear, but they seal 100 percent. Well, not 100 percent, but they seal like, you know, 35 decibels or something. I mean, it's a huge drop. Um, so they were they were molded in the in the traditional way. Um, and these were correct on the first pass and not everything is. And if they're not, and you're getting custom fit stuff done where you're paying, you know, at least hundreds, if not many thousands of dollars to get a, a set done, uh, you, you definitely want them right. But 
the JH ones that I did with the traditional molds worked out fine. Ultimate ears, which I've had many sets before, including some that Jerry made me when he was, when he was running it, uh, recently made me a set of ultimate ears, UE 11s that I use on stage. And, uh, and those were done with a new method. I went to see a guy who was not an audiologist. In fact, he's just, he's a drummer a guy named Libor Hadrava down in Massachusetts. And he had a 3d scanner that he put in my ear, John, and I could see it scanning my ear on the computer screen in front of me as he did this. Uh, it took maybe about the same amount of time, maybe five minutes per ear or whatever. He did this scan and then, you know, had me type in my name and my email or whatever into a web form. We hit send and boom, they were already at Ultimate's office in uh, Irvine, California. And uh, now those took a couple of times back and forth to get right. It, that I've had happen. It, it, it happens where the fits do, like the seals, not perfect or whatever. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that the 3D scanning is any more or less accurate than uh, than the other way. But it's certainly way more convenient and not having to get gooped up and you don't have to pay an audiologist and all that stuff. So that's sort of the new way to do it. Does that answer the question? I think so. So it sounds like at this point, so you can either get an audiologist yep. or a specialist. It'd be nice if kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like we do, we do do with uh, uh, Warby Parker. Yeah. Yeah. You do self serve. Like you get a kit that has the goop and you yep. stuff it in your ear and, you know, it dries I don't or know whatever. That you could get uh, a actually, kit. You can. And I did it for my aviation okay. headset oh, and it worked out pretty uh, well. But, and I was sitting here and I'll give you the link if you want. This is cool. It, it says make them make custom silicone in ear molds for your in ear monitors. And essentially what you do is it, it you need a, uh, you need a set of earplugs like I have, and then these are the little $20 inks sure. in ear buds and all that. But you get this kit from Radeon, I think it is. I'll find it. Okay. And, uh, we'll put it but, in the show notes. Yeah, you put it in, you do the mold, and then what you do is you take the little rubber piece off your inner monitor and stick it into the, the, the molded the silicone. Mold. Yeah. Let it sit for the five minutes or so, then take it out, and then it shows you how to cut the little, the last little bit, that little hole out. Yep. And then these fit in. And you've got and you're an good to go. mold. Yeah. So you make your own pair. It looks like it's less than $15. Okay. So, so there I are th people that offer self-serve, but, yeah. uh, but I mean, is this, I mean, you know, aviation yeah. earpieces, oh, I would they, well, say, is no, kind those, of a specialty. Those have to be, yeah, those have to be uh, TSO'd to a certain level and all okay. that kind of stuff. But um, So there's a, there's a company called Decibels with a Z, D-E-C-I-B-U-L-L-Z, okay. that does the same thing. They send you a kit, you put the... Um, the, 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 it comes with the mold, which then becomes your earpiece. Right. And you put it in boiling water or hot water or whatever it is. You get it soft. You mash it into your ear with the either an earpiece or an earplug in mm. it. Yeah. Pouring and, boiling water in your ear doesn't sound like the best idea. Well, but okay. <laughs> yeah. There, okay. There's some instructions. Oh, about follow this. the instructions. All right. Yeah, once yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, no, it, but and I will say this. I'll add this caution because I do have a, a good but not great. Uh, aviation headset right now and I did the reason is I did not push the mold far enough into my ear canal that I get the seal that I really like with it yep. it's good but it ain't great yep and uh, so be sure to push it far enough in if you're going to do that on your own that's yep. why the audiologist is good they're they've done this before that, that's the thing is they know they can pull it out and like I've had them yeah. there was a period of time I don't know like 10 years ago maybe more where I was getting this done constantly and um, my audience, uh, there were times where she pulled it out and looked at it and said, no, nope, got to do a new one. Yeah. It's like, how do you know? She's like, T -t 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 come on. Like, this yeah. is my, I've trained. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, never mind. You, you do you. Yeah. So. All Thank right. you guys. Take that was you. An exciting. Uh, 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 again, I think I'm going to put on my shopping list. Cool. Some ear pods because they sound pretty cool. Yeah. AirPods. Earpods are different. Earpods are the AirPods. Earpods yeah. are the wired ones. Right. You have exactly. those already, right. most likely. Yeah. AirPods are the are the ones. Yep. I want the AirPods. Take us to Eric, John. We have a little like little bit of time left. So let's see if we can. Get okay. Those, well, I'm going to take through. us a few places oh, here. Fine. So number one. Well, the thing is, uh, it was initially a a, a a question from Greg, okay. and basically his question was, how do I partition a USB? flash drive that i store my sure ios installers on and he said we talked well, about this last week yeah yes and so we got a follow-up here so number one um 
Apple's utility out of the box doesn't cut it. So we suggested that he goes to the terminal. Okay. And believe it or not, so his feedback, so I'm going to do a, a double dip here. So his feedback was, thanks, that did exactly what I wanted it to do. And I discovered an interesting tidbit about partitioning drives in the guide that you sent me to. In the GUI for partitioning drives, Apple only allows you to make 16. In the terminal, you can create as many as you want. I didn't need more than that, but it was interesting to add that note. So I wanted to add that note. So thank you, Greg, for giving us the feedback and that the terminal is the way to go for, you know, if you want to get the bang for your buck. But then we got a follow up from Eric saying, you know what? Yeah, that was kind of overkill, John. And I'm like, ah, OK. But basically, the, the, the feedback from Eric was you probably uh, the listener probably could have gotten accomplished what they wanted to do. If they went into, um, if they went to disutility, and the thing is, in disutility, there is a kind of hidden secret menu, and I think it's a show all devices. And the thing is, if you if you go to that and you select that, you'll get a lot more options. Right, where, where is this super secret hidden menu? Because if it's secret and hidden, we're not going to find it. Unless we know where well, to Well, it's not super secret and hidden, but the thing is, so, so in this utility, if you go to view, so by default- So this is in High Sierra only? Uh, it could be with prior versions. There is no well. view menu in disk utility in, in Sierra. Okay. Well, then it's just High Sierra. Okay. So the thing is, so the feedback was in this utility in High Sierra, which I'm running right now and I'm looking at right now. You have a view menu and you have two choices. By default, it says show only volumes. Then there's another choice that is not the default, as far as I can see, saying show all devices. So if you choose that, you will get additional options in the menu bar on the left side of the screen. Okay. And in a nutshell, to keep things tight here, um, that is another way to accomplish, to potentially accomplish what you want with this utility. Sure. As far as partitioning. Oh, that's cool. So cool. Just want to share that. And I, I see that. And yeah, it, it definitely shows additional partitions and containers and, and whatever. So for anybody that runs this utility, it's probably worth your while to run it. And uh, I think it's command two. So normally okay. volumes, command one, show yeah. all devices, command two. And there you go. You get more options. Cool. All right, you you got time for one more uh, follow up there, John, from the last show? Do you think? And let me, uh, let me. All right, well, uh, while you research that, I am going to uh, follow up from us earlier in this show with a calendar discussion. Um, John, uh, listener John in the chat room, dug into this, and indeed, what Pete was suggesting will work. Uh, according to his his tests is that you make a calendar public. Now, the trick is, if you click that link, it will do exactly what we just heard. And that is that it will try to download all those events and put them on your calendar, but it won't subscribe in order to do it. You have to in in whatever program you're using. So in calendar, you say, uh, uh, where is it here? He gave us instructions. Uh, now I'm trying to find him. You uh, you say add a, a subscribed calendar and you paste in the URL. So you go to uh, settings, you choose mail contacts and calendars on your iPhone. You say add account, you say other, you say add subscribed calendar, and then you paste the URL into the window and that will work. That will subscribe your iPhone directly to that calendar. So hopefully that helps folks out there. But the trick is on the Google side to make the calendar public Grab the iCal link, but don't click it directly. You just need to use the URL and paste it into that ad subscribed calendar thing. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, thank you. Wrap it thing pays off. Beautiful. Yeah. No, it's good. That's why I, that's, that's the thing I love about the chat room is we were and, able to do this stuff in real time. So and thank as a follow you. up, Dave. Yeah. Very brief. But uh, so Peter provided this as a follow up to 677. So we had, uh, we've had, uh, I've seen a ton of people complain about this and I was a victim of this. I don't know if you guys were when you updated to high Sierra, but it seemed to obliterate your login items. So I didn't have that, John. 
except okay. when I rebooted my machine, probably for the first time three days ago, <laughs> it blew away my login items. It's like, Sweet. wait a minute, they made the transition and now they're gone. It was just a reboot. It wasn't an update, nothing. It just rebooted. Well, it's just a feature you didn't know you needed, Dave. You didn't really want all those login items, did you? No, I did. No, and the problem was, it's like, 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 I didn't know what they were. I had to pull up the iMac here in the studio to say, like, okay, I'm pr- I basically have these computers similar. Like, uh, what what am I missing? Oh, crap. Yeah, I need that stuff. Like, Hazel? I wouldn't have known if I was missing Hazel until, like, all my automation yeah. wasn't working. And I think I told you, I, I noticed, it was like, gee, my menu bar seems very lean. <laughs> Why could that be? Yeah. And then I looked at my login items and it's like, well, that's because it wasn't launching half the things that it used to launch. So anyways, so Peter wrote in, Peter, one of our longtime listeners and uh, uh, Twitter pal. And uh, hi, Peter. Thank you. He says, I too experienced the bug of login items from system preferences, users and groups being blank after upgrading to High Sierra. The fix, and this is a potential fix, but I'm going to give it a caveat because I looked into this. The fix, one fix could be replacing home slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot login items dot p list with a backup from a prior upgrade or uh, backup. Yeah. And I will get that, though. The thing is, I will offer a caveat for that, Dave, in that. So the thing is, this happened on both of my machines, both my Mac Pro and my Mac Mini. And on my Mac Mini, Dave. One of the items in the login items is something called iTunes Helper. Right? Okay. The thing is, as far as I can tell, the thing is, I saw... So the thing is, my solution was to take screenshots of login items from my prior That's OS, a smart move, yeah. And then migrate them. The thing is, Dave, they moved some things. Including iTunes, which I'm not surprised about, because the thing is, when I looked for iTunes helper, all the help articles I could find said, well, yeah, look here for it. And I'm like, well, it's not there. So my only caution with this well, the strategy. Best, the best way to re-add things is to go to their apps and check the box that says I, I agree started, with you. startup. Yeah. The thing is, in the case of iTunes, iTunes moved, as far as I can tell, between the the... The various versions, the the old OS and the new OS, Apple moved the location of iTunes Helper, okay, which is an app that for the most part detects when you plug in a device. It's like, oh, hi, iPhone or iPad or whatever. Yeah, let me do some nice things for you. That's what right, iTunes. Let me Helper, launch iTunes is what it does. As far as I yeah. can do, and then do useful things. The thing is, they move the location of that. It used to be in one place in the iTunes package. Sure which you could map to in login items. And then they moved it in, in the latest OS. So, right. But the, the that, best way to, to do that would be to just go into sure. iTunes preferences devices and make sure the prevent isn't checked automatically. Yeah. The thing is some of the things that are in login items aren't necessarily easily locatable. I, I agree. Is what I'm saying. Well, if you don't know, they sometimes there. they're buried in packages. Yeah. And, you can't easily add. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just go into the apps and tell the apps to, to do it. Yeah. And, and that's what um, I did for the most part. When I said to the app, like Dropbox or this or that, it's like, yeah, um, load on login. And they're like, yeah, sure. Whatever. We'll re add it. But it's just, uh, not a fist shake, but, a now I'll, I'll say it's a fist shake. Why did Apple destroy this? <laughs> yeah. So listener Warren in the chat room, has been saying that that there's some things being blocked because of kernel extensions loading, but none of the ones that got removed for me had anything to do with kernel extensions. So I, I, no, I think it's just a bug. It, it's just, yeah. they just all got obliterated. Yeah. It was like, where'd they go? Yeah. Where'd they go? Know. Yeah. No kidding. So for those who are thinking of upgrading to high Sierra, check your login items. Yeah. Just take screenshots. Yeah. Take screenshots and after. or yeah. whatever. And yeah. um, when you're back from the upgrade, you may have to add them back. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Pete, it's good to have you back, man. It's good to be back. Yeah. Thanks for good. having me. It was nice being here. Yeah, it's good to have you here, man. <laughs> uh, all right. I want to take a minute and thank all of our premium subscribers that 
contributed this week. But first, I want to thank all of our premium subscribers that were on credit cards that converted to our new credit card system this week. There are lots of you. We sent out emails to everyone affected. Um, it's possible it wound up in your you know spam or news folder or something. But uh, but you can visit your subscription at uh, MacGeekGab.com slash premium if you want to see if you're on the legacy system. It'll show you when you log in there. Um, but for everybody that converted over already, thank you so much. There's so many of you, and, uh, and you rock. So for those that contributed this week, we had a couple of one-time subscri- or one-time contributions. Kevin S. for 100 bucks, Kenneth K. for 25 Thank you so much to both of you. And, uh, and then on subscription renewals, we have uh, on the 10 bucks, 10 bucks a month plan, Frank A., Abdullah B., Mark R., Michael B., Barry F., Jim E., James B., and John G. And on the biannual plan, uh, 25 bucks for most of you, although Lawrence H. was at 50. Uh, and then David C., Chris H., Anthony T., Kurt T., Ralph F., Paul K., Bob H., Robin J., Bob H., Mark W., Thank you so much to all of you. You rock. Really, really rock. Thanks so much. They all rock. I, oh, I got to say, I think we more. mentioned Barry F. I think I think we both know that guy. We both know a lot of the people that I mentioned he is here, an, John. Barry, Barry F. was F, the was As the we first. know, is the nicest guy well, Barry, in the world. Barry and was, our the, first, was the first premium subscriber. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. You really rock. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh all of you premium subscribers, of course, can email us at premium at MacGeekGab.com. Everybody can email us at feedback at MacGeekGab.com. And I think, Dave, I'm pretty sure I heard you, but Pete may help me out here. But I'm, I'm pretty sure you said feedback at MacGeekGab.com. Feedback. Back. Feedback. Feedback. That's what the horse is. <laughs> no, 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 no. Feedback at, Mac, no, feedback at MacGeekGap.com. I think that's what you said. You're not helping, Pete. 224-888-GEEK is the number that you can call. And John Geek is? Always 4335. Three, Indeed. And you can visit us in our Facebook group at uh, MacGeekGap.com slash Facebook. That is where you will find some great folks helping you answer your questions. Uh, we're there, too, of course, but it's more than just us. Really, really good stuff. I want to thank our sponsors. Of course, Jamf at uh, or Jamf now, I should say, at Jamf.com slash MGG. Barebones Software at barebones.com. Smile Software at, or smile at smilesoftware.com. I'll get it right one of these days. Otherworld Computing at maxsales.com. Very, very good stuff. Pete, help us out. Well, I, I got one what quick question need to know? for you guys. Would you guys both agree that we're all good guys? I think Dave? we're all good yeah. guys. John? Are we good guys or not? Uh, that, that's relative, man. Are we it's good guys? It's a yes guys? or no question. Yeah. Uh, yes. See what I do? Yeah, with your see, feet? exactly. Um, thanks for the help, Dave. So we're good guys. And by definition, good guys are bad guys who don't get caught. Made up.